Okay, guys, state is a bit controversial. It's everywhere, but at the same time, nobody can actually explain what state is until now. You see, guys, state is a part of CRUD. The subatomic particles of a computer, any program that you use anywhere on Earth, you are utilizing CRUD. You're creating data, you're reading data, you're updating data, you're deleting data. I say that often. But what if we could split the subatomic particles? What if we could split it down even further? You could describe CRUD and every single piece of software on Earth as storing data and manipulating data. And which one do you think is state? If you guess storing data, congratulations, you just split the subatomic particles of software and caused a huge fucking explosion. But React is a little bit different. React has a totally different way of describing state, and React has very specific rules. The documentation describes state as a memory card. It remembers things. But state in React, like I said, has very, very specific rules that you must follow. It's almost like a game of jump rope. If you could imagine this memory card going down and being where this lady is jump roping, you would have a pretty accurate description of state. And every single time that rope hits the ground, the web page is going to re-render. You see, the beauty of React is that each individual component, each individual little part of your program is rendering. But when you do all of these renders, you have to find a place to store state because web pages are stateless. Each time the jump rope hits the ground, your state has to be in a very specific location and you can't actually touch the state yourself. So what do you do? You use the predefined hooks in order to utilize this memory card so that you can store the state before React renders and the jump rope hits the ground. And the hook is just called use state. Use state pretty much provides a getter and a setter for you. You use the getter on the left side and you use the setter on the right side. And each time you use the setter, the page is going to re-render and you can go up, you can grab your state and you use this part to actually utilize it in the HTML of your web page. But that's enough. Let's go ahead and let's dive into some actual code and let's see how this works and how do we actually use use state in TypeScript. Okay, so we are in VS Code right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start working on the search bar because the search bar has a form and forms need state. Gonna create a folder just like always. Then I'm gonna go into here, create a TypeScript file. Also as well, going to create a CSS file. We'll work on the CSS later. Right now, since we're still kind of in learning mode, we will worry about just the TypeScript. So I'm gonna go TS, wrap C, go ahead, utilize my snippet, go into here, we'll say react.fc. We can pass in our props, but we don't have to. You could just leave it like this, or you could even do this if you want to. You do that too. But for right now, I'm gonna be super official and I'm just gonna pass in the props. And also going to have the jsx.element right here. Okay, so we are looking good. Now what we need to do is we need to start working on the state. And the state is going to be relatively simple. We're only going to need to use one hook and it's going to be for our search. So we'll say search and we'll say set search just like this and we will use state. Now you don't have to technically do TypeScript right here. TypeScript will automatically infer everything for you. And TypeScript is kind of like that. If you just want to put a string in there and you don't want to do any type checking, you can just go ahead and TypeScript will let you do it. But the bad thing is, is that we don't have TypeScript. So we might as well learn TypeScript because this is also a TypeScript, React TypeScript course. There's two ways to do it. You can infer it, which is basically guessing the type for you i.e. what we're doing right now, what TypeScript is doing is basically it's using type checking, but it's inferring it for you. If you look here, it's already got the string. You've already passed the string. So TypeScript underneath the hood is going to go ahead and do the type checking for you. But we don't want that because that means TypeScript is off. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use these things called generics. 
and pass it a string. We're going to be explicit. Now you don't need to know exactly what a generic is at this point. It's more of an advanced thing, but just realize that a generic is the alligator clips that's going to allow you to pass in the type so that whenever you utilize use state right here or utilize these uh, getters and setters, it's going to require that you use a string. So let's go ahead and let's actually start wiring up the input because forms, as I mentioned before, are basically just a single input for a form. All we need is a single input. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go ahead and declare an input right here. So we'll say input and it's going to do the, oh, I need to close it. And it's going to go ahead and finish it off for us because VS Code is cool like that. Now what we need to do is we need to start worrying about the value. We need to pass the value of search because that is going to be the actual value that shows up. But when we actually type, what's happening is called an event. Now I'm going to talk more about events in the next video, but just realize that event is just a fancy method that you can put into HTML that's going to track when a change actually happens in this input. And this is very specific to React. It's something that you will probably have to get used to, but once you do it a couple times, it's not hard at all. So what we need to do is we need to put an on change. And what's going to happen is since this is actually built into React, React, React is going to provide the actual data right here in this E. And this E is going to be passed into our on click right here, which we actually have to create. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create an on click event handler. We're going to pass in this E because we're passing it in right down here. Remember that this is being passed. Basically, it's going to go up to here and we're going to turn off the TypeScript for now. Once we get, I'm going to actually do a more in-depth video on how event handling actually works. Event handling is a pretty complex topic. So if we we're going to turn off the TypeScript right now, but just realize that I'm going to explain more how this works here in a, another video up next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the e.target.value and all e.target.value is, is you're going into this input and you're getting a value. And I'll show you how this works here in just a second. And then all we're going to do is we're going to log this E. This E is kind of very strange and bewildering. Why do we need this E? What does it mean? And you will understand where the E is coming from in just a second after this loads. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to load this up right here. And I also need to put the actual search on the main page. I actually almost forgot that. So I need to actually bring in the search right here. So I'm going to bring in the search, went ahead, brought it in for us. We now have this little search bar in our actual app. I'm going to go ahead and inspect it. And let's see what actually happens when we type. Each time that this types, a event is being fired. Each time that this types, set state is being triggered. Each time that this types, this little E is going to be logged onto the page. Now, you wouldn't actually do this in real life, but take a look at like what's inside this E. It's kind of peculiar, like where this E comes from. And I'll just kind of walk you through it. So on change is being triggered. The E is going to be produced by React. It's going to go into the on click. It's going to be passed into this function that we made. It's going to be console log, and then it's going to show up on the page. And then if we log down and we look into one of these synthetic events, one of them is going to be the e.target. Then we can actually go into the value and then we can see this ERRE -E that we actually typed into the input. And that is a good stopping place because now we're about to go more into depth with events. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.